So we have 3 sine x plus 2, which means we have 3 sine x equals negative 2, sine of x equals negative 2 over 3. We want to find the sine, the, the, we want to find the angle with the sine ratio that has a sine ratio of negative 2 thirds. First off, can we just predict where that's going to be? It's going to negative 2 thirds. Where is that going to be? Fourth quadrant? Why do we think fourth quadrant? Yeah, it's sine. Um, so we're dealing with the y value. So we know it's probably going to be down here. Um, it's a negative value. Uh, let's actually use the, the calculator. There's, there's two main ways that you need to be comfortable using the calculator here. One you've probably done before, uh, at least in your geometry class, where you've gi been given the ratio and you want to find the angle. First off, you might want to check to make sure your mode is in radian and not degree. And then we know that the sign, um, the sign button are these buttons right in front of the comma and the parentheses. And actually before we do this, it might be helpful to say that to get the x by itself, we take the inverse sign of both sides. Inverse sign of sine of x just goes to x. And so really what we're looking for is the inverse sine of negative 2 thirds. x equals the inverse sine of negative 2 thirds. We want the angle with the sine ratio of negative 2 thirds. So have we, we've done this on the calculator, do we remember? I mean, you definitely did it in geometry, but it was a very, very, very short, short section in geometry. But um, right above sine, the same button, the second function is inverse sine. So you hit uh, second sign and you get inverse sign and then you can type in that ratio negative 2 divided by 3 and you're going to get negative 0.723 or ne negative 7 point negative 0.7297 so what does that mean? Negative point seven nine. What was it? Yeah, we want to do to the nearest hundredth, right? So we got to round up. Negative point seven three. Is that our answer? That's going clockwise. So what do we have to do? Yeah, so this is going, this is in the fourth quadrant. But because it's negative, it's going the other way around. So this is where we got to do a little bit of thinking about, well, this asks us specifically for the value of x that's between 0 and 2 pi. This is not between 0 and 2 pi we should get an answer between 0 and 6 point something. So we've got to go the other way around. If we're here, we got to go one full rotation to figure out where we would be. So if we add 2 pi, then what do we get? 5.5 what? These angles are coterminal. They have the same terminal ray. The difference is this one's within our range, this one's not. Any questions about using the inverse function? There's something you probably have, yeah. So, when you add the 2 pi, is that just like, wait, what are you doing when you add the 2 pi? So, our val the, the x that we got was negative 0.73. That's going clockwise. Okay. But that's not in our range. We want our angle to be positive between 0 and 2 pi. So what we have to do, if we're here, we've got to add 2 pi 
to go all the way around, and that'll tell us where we landed. No, because pi is 3.14. Yeah, to the negative. So that this will give us the answer going the other way around. Five point five five radians. Now, yeah. Why wouldn't it be? Yeah. So. So are, is there more than one answer? What do we think? Is there anywhere else with the sine ratio of negative 2 thirds? Well, the issue is, is that they told us what range to look in. Yeah, so again, if they don't tell us the range, we've got those default ranges. These are all telling us the ranges. So is there another angle with this same y value? Yeah. It's going to be the one over here. How would we figure out this angle? Say it again. Well, if we do, you said pi minus 0 0.73? Yeah. yeah, if you did pi, that's pi, and then you subtract, you'll be up here. Okay, yeah. Yeah, the idea is that there's, there's a pi value here, there's a pi value here. We want, oops, probably, probably a good way of thinking about it is it's pi plus the same amount here, which is 0.73. We want to add that on down here. So we've got pi and then another 0.73. What, what is that angle? What was that? 3.87. I guess I could figure that one out. 3.87. So it looks like we've got two values, two uh, two radian values. I don't know why I keep erasing that circle. One is where we take, we go all the way around to the fourth quadrant. The other one's where we go to the third quadrant. And those both those two angles both have the same y value. That's why again it's helpful. The calculator is helpful, but it'll just find one. Oftentimes, it might, it, it might find the one that we're looking for. In this case, the range uh, presented a little bit of a challenge. So drawing a picture helped us to figure out if this is actually the angle, how do we find that coterminal angle that's in our range? And is there any other angle that still has that same sine value? In this case, it was in the third quadrant. Another way to do this, which I know you've probably, well, I don't want to assume what you've done anymore. Maybe you've done it. I don't know. I don't know why this is not working. Here we go. Um, if we, calculator's not working. If we take our calculators, and this is kind of an, a neat way to, to think about it. take our, our calculators, um, we can actually graph in the y e y1 equals sine of x. Now it's not going to graph it on a unit circle, it's actually going to graph it on an xy plane. So it's going to graph the y value um, as the value of the sine of x along the x-axis. So 
it's going to look like this. And we've seen this image before where at, uh, at zero, zero degrees, there's no value for sine. Um, it reaches its peak at pi over 2, or 90 degrees, when it gets to 1, and then it goes back down to 0 at, uh, at 1 pi. Then it goes to negative 1 at 3 halves pi, and then it goes back to 0 once we get to a full 2 pi, and it continues that cycle. This is not the best, uh, not the best zoom for it. I think, is there a zoom trig? There is a zoom trig. If you go to zoom trig, this sets it up very nicely uh, with respect to the, the axis because it actually has pi over two um, units. And it has one for the, the y units, the scale of the y axis. Now we want to know where this sine ratio equals negative two thirds. So in addition to, to graphing sine, I'm going to also graph y equals negative two divided by three. And we can see that in uh, this is pi, this is pi over two, this is pi, this is three pi over two, this is four pi. So in the range between zero and two pi, which is at the end of our s uh, at the end of our window, how many times does this trig function hit negative two over three? Well, in the range of zero to two pi, though, zero to two pi, it hits it here. It hits it here. Two separate places. Do we remember how to figure out where those points of intersection are? Yeah, this, this uh, trace button, the second function on this is calculate. So if we hit second, trace, we can calculate and do the intersection. And they're going to ask us a series of questions here. First question is, where's the first curve? I'm just going to kind of zoom or trace over to my point. That's not necessary, but I just want to make sure I'm on the right curve. I'm going to hit enter. Then it's asking the second curve. They're basically verifying which two curves we want to find the intersection of. So I'm going to hit enter again. Now they want me to guess. Now the guess is kind of important because there's more than one place it hits. I don't want this one. I don't want this one. I want this one first. So if I guess it's closest to that one, I'm guessing it'll go to that one. And here we go. We get x equals 3.87. Should we be surprised by that number? That was the first one in the third quadrant here. That was 3.87. Then we can do the same thing. Second, calculate, intersect. First curve, second curve. Oops. Wrong button. Intersect. First curve, second curve. I'm going to scroll over to make the guess more accurate. And we get 5.553, whatever. Should we be surprised by that answer? No. Because that's what we got for that. Right. Now, what's the advantage of actually seeing it on this graph? It's always your water. What was that? You can tell the quadrant. Yeah, you can tell the quadrant. You can, you can more easily check the range. We didn't have to think. Are we adding this from pi? Are we subtracting this from pi? Are we adding 2 pi or whatnot? We can actually figure out if our range is from 0 to 2 pi. Remember, the x-axis is the, is the angle measure. From 0 to 2 pi, it hits at two different places. And we can figure that out pretty nicely. This first chunk is the first quadrant, the second quadrant, the third quadrant, the fourth quadrant. It happens in the third and the fourth. That's where using the calculator can be, be very handy. So you want to be comfortable with both both strategies, using the inverse trig and by graphing it. Why don't you go ahead and write down your big idea for this problem? <laughs>